Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. On the advice of a friend, I got this. Uh, this is a new orchid um, that I got at our show last Saturday, so a week ago. And my friend bought one at the same time. And she got hers out of the pot and said there were no roots and a load of soggy moss. Um, this is in sick. Encyclia Shin Fong Thomas. So let's see what mine's like. Um, I'm going to take the stake off simply because if you try and mess about with the stake when you take the plant out of the pot, you can actually break the spike. You're more likely to break the spike. So let's see what we've got then. Um, expecting the worst. So it's just a piece of bark stuck down that. Uh... I'm getting it. I would have expected better from where that came, but um, where it came from was probably doing no more than selling it on. Now the moss has obviously been put round the base of that plant to try and encourage some root growth. Um, I don't like that idea, personally. Oh, it just leads to a soggy base. Um, most of these roots are dead, so I'm going to take them off. Or I'm going to take the dead ones off, let's put it that way. Which is most of them. Yeah, it is, most of them. So we're into a rescue straight away, and um, yes, it's just a few, just a few here that aren't too bad, but where they've been in that moss, they've started to go. Instead of growing, they're starting to fail, the growing tips have gone. So the moss was not the best of ideas, it should have made the plant work. Now this is quite a nice plant with quite nice blooms that I would like to keep long term. I'm just taking the sheaths off at the moment. There's another, if you look at this, oh, hang on that camera's not the best at angles is it? If you look at this now, you look at the colour of the sheath that's dry. This sheath is soaking wet. It's absorbing moisture and holding it and that is a sure way to rot a rhizome. So I'm taking them off. Hopefully that will allow the uh, base of the rhizomes to dry out because they are very wet. There is a sign of a new growth just there. New growth normally equals new roots. And if you look at the base of that pseudo bulb, looks like there's another one. So this may be coming into growth, um, we can only hope. If it does, then hopefully we'll get some roots. In the meantime, the bulbs are relatively plump. Certainly this latest one is nice and plump, yeah? The two behind aren't bad. There are resources in this plant to allow it to survive feed itself via photosynthesis via the leaves. It has four nice bright green large leaves so it can provide some sugars and things generated by the photosynthesis process. It's not going to be able to get resources up through the roots because it hasn't got any. So what do we do then? We want to regenerate this. Where do we have to put the energy? We have to put all the resources into the base of the plant to try and get new roots. So unfortunately, we sacrifice the blooms. Tough. So we now have a plant that can probably survive three or four months without roots from its internal resources and the resources it can generate via photosynthesis. So all it needs to do is to be, oh hang on, Noisy wants to go out. Do you want to go out? Come on. No? 
Make your mind up. Yes, so where was I? So all I'm going to do now is it will need a stake to hold it still, but I'm just going to set this up on my normal let's get some root mix and um, stake it to that, stake the base of the plant to that. It's highly unlikely to grow any roots. In fact, I need to do some more trimming here. There's a lot of roots at the base of that pseudo bulb that would hold moisture and we don't want the uh, we don't want the rhizome to rot. I'm going to take those right back. So there's virtually no roots now. Um, however, if I just put that on the bench with no media, it would survive. You'd be surprised how long it would survive, not even going in a pot or on a mount. Just chuck it on the bench dry. Just spritz the leaves every now and again and it would survive for some time. But if it's sitting on some media, then the instant some little root nubbins appear, they will have something to grow into. So that's what we'll do. We'll have a clear up and then, uh, as usual, I'll be back. Right, the fact that we've got no roots, obviously I need minimal media sat underneath the plant, because it will only stay wet. So that's quite heavy crocking there. And then uh, this is um, already mixed up from previous pottings, leftovers as I call them. We should have a reasonable mix here. So, so I want some moss, but I don't want to, too much. There's enough to... The idea with this mix is that um, the perlite holds some water. And by having some sphagnum moss in there in small pieces, it distributes itself in amongst the bark. And because it's only in small pieces, it can't form a soggy mass because it's in little bits. And those little bits are all mixed in amongst the bark. So they can hold a little bit of moisture, which being next to the bark helps the bark stay moist a little longer because new bark dries out incredibly fast. Um, if you want to water every other day, that's fine, I don't. So, uh, we'll run with that. And I'm not going to put much in. We'll worry about where the roots are going to go when we see some growing which we aren't going to see any growing for some time. So I'm just going to sit that there and then remove the moss so that I've just got mainly bark left. Just flick the moss out of the way and then put that around the base. So the moisture will be underneath to a degree, but not to any great extent. As I said, there were two new growths showing. I can encourage, having taken the flower spike off, the plant should react and um, come back into growth now. Stay. <laughs> we need some clips and then some stakes. Let's see what we can do. This won't be very easy to stake because I've got no depth, no media depth. But it's only just got to hold it still until some roots grow. So we put one there and it clip. I'll do. I doubt if this is going to hold much. That's one. And if I can put another one down this side. Huge pieces of bark in there, there's not much room. We've got another little one. We might have to uh, try and get some more of these clips sometime, a bit low. Because these are very good because you've got the control of, yeah, whoops, and then you drop that on the floor and it's gone underneath so it can stay there. Oh, well, we'll try and get one of the really small ones on.
And then what I'm going to do is the fact that those um, stakes are not holding very well, I'm going to now clip the two stakes together. And we can do that with a grabby one, a metal grabby one, because they're quite firm. Now none of that is very stable, but it's good enough to stop it wobbling to any great extent. As I said, it's, it's not going to get watered very often. Because there's no roots to water. So all we've got to do is keep that gently moist, not soaking wet. And we'll stick the label back in despite it being torn. <coughs> and I will now update my notes to say that I've got it, because I haven't even done that yet. And then we'll give that a water and um, see what happens. But um, it's a shame to have to sacrifice the spike. But the, um, to get those blooms would have reduced the resources in the plant considerably. To, uh, you know, to go from buds to blooms, that's quite a bit of resource. And I'd much prefer the resources to stay in the plant while it thinks about generating a new root system, which hopefully will coincide with those new growths. I doubt if we will see any roots until those new growths get going. And depending on the plant and it's um, the way it does its rooting, some of these types of plants with these types of pseudo bulbs don't put their new roots out until the new growths are quite mature. So we could have to wait some time. But like I said, we've got nice plump bulbs here. Um, they should last the plant quite a while without having to worry too much about the fact that we haven't got any uptake from the base of the plant. Now obviously with photosynthesis there's only a certain amount and certain types of feed. That's not a full nutrient cross section, um, but it's enough to keep it alive and um, hopefully stop it shriveling for a while, but not forever. It will need roots eventually. So uh, there we go, that's that one done. And um, that's all I'm going to do today. And I will see you tomorrow for the Sunday chat. If you're interested, there's a new video on the Gardening and Bonsai channel, Roger's Garden and Bonsai. And it's basically, um, <laughs> it's some brought, a set of three brought forward videos from the old dormant channel showing me attacking this part of the garden, the part of the garden that we see out of the window. And it's basically attacking the hedge what was a giant wisteria that went almost up to the top of the tree, which is long since gone now. But yeah, it's a sort of um, heavy duty workload. You know, that was the work that was being done initially. So uh, that's over on that channel if you fancy popping across there and stick some views on there for me. And um, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for the Sunday chat. Subject as yet unknown.